financial institutions are seeing the benefits of flexible cloud-based technologies, but are they considering the cyber risks? That was a theme at Cybos 2019. Complexity equals risk. And in a typical um, IT environment, what you find is that most of the breaches happen because somebody forgot to do something, somebody misconfigured something. Let's say if you're an organization that's doing sharing, you're working with a third party um, or a business partner and you're sharing that data. So being able to, to kind of revoke that access for someone if you sever their relationship for some other reason, that's been um, critically important for our customers. Your organization has to be ready to become an engineering organization to properly leverage the cloud. And it's all about building out, um, taking kind of the human risk out of the equation to a large extent. We can introduce security, you know, scanning in a, in a, in a deployment pipeline um, that fundamentally uh, uplifts our capability. Interestingly, in a cloud, what you're talking about is the creation of a pattern and then the reapplication of that pattern again and again. So instead of having to patch 100 different things, you patch once. That's a benefit. Problem, of course, is the aggregation risk. If you make a mistake once, you're replicating that mistake out many times. Cyber risk consistently ranks as the number one fear factor facing the global financial system. One area which I'm, I'm very proud of the sector of reaching is resiliency. And resiliency requires admitting, acknowledging that the bad thing can happen. Cybersecurity is not like putting a good alarm on your car. It's not occasional attacks. It's like having an absolute bloody maniac in the boot of your car who wants to kill you all the time 24-7. We do see an increase in, in technology complexity and the attacks are increasing in sophistication as well. Why don't I bring my data to the bank and trust that they will know what to do with it. I think that there's a literacy problem globally beyond my age group in what are you giving for what you're getting. I don't think we think about data in the, in the right way yet. We also need to be really clear on what our customers are consenting to. It is critical not to let the bad guys win by taking advantage of this fragmented landscape around legal requirements. Uh, we've seen the emergence of a much more aggressive strain um, of attackers, uh, higher end capability, the combination of bespoke malware advanced social engineering, for example, to directly target bank transfer payment systems. A very, very low percentage of customers have enabled multi-factor authentication. And to my mind, that just means that you're relying on people using their dog's name as the password. Yeah, I think it's like 90% of all attacks would be stopped by enabling multi-factor authentication. They've not necessarily been very sophisticated attacks. They've targeted basic security controls and foundational elements that we are all expected to implement. Years ago, you had criminal actors on one side, nation state actors on the other. They're working together now. When you're authenticating a painting, you're gonna look at the frame, you're gonna look at the paint, you're gonna look at the brush stroke. Well, we do a lot of the same things when we're doing attributions of an adversary. The question is whether the industry can maintain its security vigilance as it embraces the benefits of blockchain. Market disruption attacks, type of attacks, are the ones that states are really worried about, okay? So it's not stealing money anymore. Uh, let's make sure that the good practice in, on information sharing on cybersecurity will be applied to blockchain. We're no competitor in that area, let's change and know what's out there. It will just help the ecosystem. Public blockchains and permissionless blockchains are much bigger and much more exciting attack uh, po possibilities uh, than uh, private chains. Also because there's much more money in it. The incentives are completely different if you think about it. Security research on blockchain has not even started. It's normally, in any other uh, field, security comes second. It's first do my shiny thing and then I'll think about security. And now with the promise, uh, a promise of a blockchain, it's like, well, now I don't even have to think about security because blockchain will make, make it secure. Yeah, that's a Wishful thinking. Blockchain is far from being a magic wand. I, I think we all need to keep that in mind. It could be a wonderful technology to validate transaction and have a straightforward transaction path, but this is not a magic wand for sure. Yeah. Minimizing overall cyber risk to the financial sector depends upon the protection and participation of all sizes of organizations. Quite frankly, this is not a problem uh, that can be solved by any individual firm. 
we're all connected with each other. We apply the same set of rules to every single customer, whether you're in payments, whether you're in securities, whether you're in FX, treasuries, or whether you're in trade. We don't care. It's the same set of rules, whether you're big, whether you're small. I think we, we all recognize that one of the, the, the greatest vulnerabilities on the, on the cybersecurity front is our third-party service providers, right. mm -hmm. uh, which in some cases, for some banks, will be thousands of uh, people, each and every one of which needs to be vetted, mm -hmm. uh, given that they have access to either the bank's data or, or worse, the bank's systems. Your security is only as good as your weakest part or the weakest element in the chain. Um, and when we look at bank-to-bank -bank communications, that looks pretty secure right away of what we do, or even ourselves with the, with the central infrastructure. The challenge is actually, can you maintain that level of security right the way up to the edge, which could be a mobile device? And the answer is you can't. We heavily invest in trying to evolve our software where we can to counteract some of the techniques which are being used. I mean, we need to keep evolving as they will keep evolving. This is a business. They look for profit, so they need to keep evolving themselves. Now is the opportunity to start creating security, designing and security for the digital channels of the future. An army of one will not win the cyber war. Mm -hmm.